The government's shutdown is finally over to the nation's relief, but there are still issues to work out. And a peaceful vigil remembering a student who was loved on this campus. I'm Kyla Gaylor. And I'm Daniel Rodriguez. Last Wednesday, Congress reached a bipartisan agreement to end the 16-day government shutdown. The new bill, passed by both the House and Senate, reopens the government through mid-January, as well as extends the government's borrowing limit until February. We'll begin reopening our government immediately. And we can begin to lift this cloud of uncertainty and unease from our businesses and from the American people. Hopefully next time, uh, it won't be in the 11th hour. This victory comes just after President Obama and the Democrats refused to bargain with congressional Republicans over basic government operations in the bill. 33,000 children were stranded earlier this month after Boston Public School bus drivers went on a surprise strike. Boston school officials are now urging parents to be prepared for another strike. Offered any kind of meeting right now is because we have the power of a force. We are together. Now, in any struggle, we're almost to the finish line. We're almost to the goal line. We're in the red zone right now. Don't fumble that ball when we're in the red zone. Let's carry it all the way and get the job done. Officials say a demonstration of 100 drivers at the Freeport bus yard this past Saturday shows the labor dispute remains unsettled. President Obama addressed the nation on Monday from the White House Road Garden in regards to glitches on the government's website, healthcare.gov. This website's problems are preventing people from signing up for health care under the Affordable Care Act. Obama emphasized that the glitches would be fixed and that tech industry experts were brought in to help solve the problem. And the number of people who visited the site has been overwhelming, which has aggravated some of these underlying problems. Nearly 500,000 people have filed for applications of health care, and the Congressional Budget Office expects 7, 7 million people to enroll by April 1st. Yesterday, a tragedy reminiscent of Newtown happened in Nevada. A student of Sparks Middle School opened fire, wounding two classmates and killing a teacher. According to police, math teacher Mike Lansbury, who was a former Marine, rushed to stop the incident. After firing a few shots, the 12-year-old boy then turned the gun on himself. Police are still trying to determine why this young boy did what he did. Police are investigating the death of a Danvers math teacher. 24-year-old Colleen Ritzer's body was found dead in the woods behind Danvers High School last night. A 14-year-old boy is charged with the murder of Ritzer, and police use social media to track down the young boy, who is now in custody. The identity of the teenager is not being released because he is a minor, and all public schools in Danvers were closed today. A six-foot alligator made an unwelcomed appearance at the front door of a Florida Walmart. The incident happened Sunday morning in Apopka, outside of Orlando. The gator stopped in the entryway, causing the automatic doors to open and close until employees locked them. Apopka police officers were immediately called and upon arrival tried to lure the alligator away while customers gathered taking pictures. The gator eventually took off in nearby woods and was never found. Fortunately, nobody was injured or eaten. Last Thursday, the on-campus student group D Divest UMass held a protest to encourage UMass officials to change the way the university infests in fossil fuels. The group held the protest outside the campus center parking garage, hanging a large sign addressed directly to UMass President Robert Corrette. The protest attracted a large crowd of supporters, and according to the group, their petition now has over 3,000 signatures. Next Wednesday, on October 30th, the Campus Center Auditorium will hold the annual Majors Fair from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. During the event, students get a better look in to, into potential areas of study. Last year, representatives from more than 80 different departments attended, answering questions to more than 1,400 students. All current and prospective students are encouraged to attend. This past Sunday, a candlelight vigil was held in memory of Evan Jones, a UMass sophomore who passed away last month. Sam Biggers attended the vigil. Sunday's candlelight vigil was less of a sad occasion and more of a happy remembrance of a student who brought so much joy and friendship. Earlier this month, a Facebook group was created to help reach out to the whole campus community to help spread the word about the vigil tonight. During the ceremony, friends and family alike spoke, telling stories about Jones to the hundreds who showed up to pay respects to their late friend. After the vigil, the crowd moved to Newman Center, where we spoke to one of Jones' closest friends about what the vigil meant to him. 
was just a great turnout for everyone. I mean, everyone came out to show their support. It was really moving to see how many people he actually touched. And, uh, you know, it was great to see everyone come out and just to show their support. That We had his family out, came, drove, drove up from Milton. They came. It was great to have them out here. It just made the whole thing even better. This is Sam Biggers reporting for UMass This Week. And we'll be right back after this break. Please stay tuned. $30 million is being raised to reopen the old chapel here on campus. The fundraising campaign began on Friday by Chancellor Subaswamy and the plan is to restore the building to its original state from 1886. This includes reopening the auditorium made inside the building and according to officials, library staff will be operating from here as well. This is an attempt by the university to encourage students and faculty to learn more about the historical significance of the building. One student business on campus is facing tough times. Megan Allen has more. As the oldest student-run business on campus, opening over 40 years ago, People's Market runs by the slogan, food for people, not for profit. However, the importance of profit may become a priority for this co-op upon the increasing threat of closure. Yeah, when I started at People's Market, we would frequently have so many people in the market that it would almost be like you couldn't um, walk around. And now it's very slow since a lot of people, I feel like they have, there's a lot of brand confusion and people don't know like what's going, where we're going and where we are. Workers feel that the presence of some of the newer businesses on campus may be a factor in why they are not doing as well as they used to. I know that they kind of want to make a new one, a new Starbucks place in uh, the business school. I don't understand why we don't like emphasize more on like exactly what the school can offer instead of just going like, we're going to throw in some, you know, some stale muffins and bagels and some really burnt coffee all over campus. Well, um, around campus, like the, um, the procrastination station got renamed to People's Organic. So we frequently have people come into our cafe asking like, oh, is this People's Organic? Because it's People's Market, it's very similar. So people, um, actually a lot of people think that we branched out and that is also People's Market. Um, so they go there trying to support us, but they're actually supporting the school. People's Market is just one of the many student-run businesses here at UMass that has seen a major decline in revenue over the past few years. And student co-managers here fear that unless major changes are made, the university will lose this valuable asset. Well, the way People's Market runs is we always have a little bit of backup money. It's called our contingency fund. And right now, in order to run, we're actually pulling out of the contingency fund. So that's like that's like your savings account. And we're really running on fumes right now. So I think that like my financial opinion would be like if the situation doesn't improve we probably have two or three semesters left. However, student workers are not giving up hope and are looking for new ways to bring in revenue and keep people's market afloat. So I'm working on making espresso happen which will I think give us a really good edge against like people, things like Starbucks we will actually be able to make lattes and stuff like that. It's just interesting because right now we're trying to balance out the work of like having less members so hopefully we have like a lower payroll to help keep costs more uh, you know more manageable but at the same time like we're all putting in extra effort to keep the market afloat. Reporting for UMass this week I'm Megan Allen. New Jersey has now become the 14th state to legalize same-sex marriages. On Friday, the state Supreme Court refused to delay marriages li marriage license and mandated that same-sex marriage ceremonies could begin this past Monday. Republican Governor Chris Christie's administration attempted to repeal this decision of the court, but later withdrew Having this exchanged appeal. exchanged their vows, I now, by the power vested in me, thank God, by the state of New Jersey, it's about time, I declare Joseph and Orville to be lawful spouses in the state of New Jersey. Christie does not support same-sex marriages, but favors civil unions in the state. This past Monday, UMass got a visit from actress Laverne Cox from the Netflix series Orange is the New Black. Shannon Barrett has more. Shannon, how was Monday's event? Thank you, Kyla. Laverne Cox's speech really showed her colors. She stated a powerful quote that really stuck out in her speech. One is not simply born a woman, but rather becomes one. As some may know, she plays Sophia Bursett on the Netflix show Orange is the New Black about a woman's prison. Laverne is a transgender woman from Alabama, and she faced ridicule as a child and abuse from fellow classmates as a teenager. Laverne grew up in a single-parent household. Growing up, she knew she was different and began taking classes in the third grade. Although her mother refused to sign her up for ballet, saying it was too gay, 
She overcame all of that and became the woman we see today. Laverne is the first trans woman of color to produce and star in her own television show, VH1's Transform Me, which was nominated for a GLAAD Media Award. Laverne is also the first trans woman of color to appear on an American reality television program, VH1's I Want to Work for Diddy, <coughs> or which she accepted the GLAAD Media Award for its outstanding reality program. She is the recipient of the Courage Award from the Anti-Violence Project, and she was named one of the top 50 trans icons by the Huffington Post. Refor reporting for UMass, this is Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. Later, see what UMass is planning for its homecoming football game. And we'll give you the details on where and when you can show your campus pride to be featured on Boston's Fox 25 Morning Show. We'll be right back. So please stay with us. Boston's beloved baseball team is one big step closer to completing their comeback this season after Saturday's game against the Detroit Tigers. The Red Sox earned their ticket to the World Series after Victorino hit his seventh inning grand slam that gave Boston a 5-2 victory over the Detroit in Game 6 of the ALCS. The Sox will now take on the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals. By virtue of the American League winning the All-Star Game in July, the Red Sox have home field advantage for the Fall Classic, which begins tonight at Fenway Park. Go Sox! UMass students came together on Friday and participated in the second annual Nearly Naked Run Mile. The event started in Northeast and ended at Southwest Concourse with students only wearing t-shirts, shorts, and underwear as they finished the race. The run was an attempt to collect clothing for an estimated 16,000 population that are homeless across Massachusetts in the winter. It's that time of year again, homecoming. Join UMass at Patriots Place in Foxborough for a tent to tailgate barbecue, music, games, and giveaways on Saturday, October 26. Also, don't forget to stop at the Taste of Amherst to get a bite of all, your fall, all of your favorite local restaurants, such as Antonio's, the Black Sheep Deli, and The Hangar, just to name a few. Kickoff starts at 3 p.m. against Western Michigan. We take you back now to Connecticut, this time to Stratford, where James Villalobos attended a fundraising walk for Newtown teacher Vicki Soto. On November 2nd, there will be a 5K road race in honor of Vicki Soto a teacher killed in the December 14th massacre that occurred at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. Carlos Soto, the younger brother of Vicky Soto, says Vicky always had a passion for teaching. She absolutely loved it. She loved it with all of her heart. She knew she wanted to be a teacher since probably freshman year in high school. They're hoping for over 1,200 participants to fill this lot behind me and together honor the memory of Vicky Soto while also raising money to support those who want to go into education. The run will begin at the lot across from 550 Main Street in Stratford, Connecticut. And even if you can't make it, you can still be part of a virtual run. When you go to the registration site, there is a menu and one of the options is virtual runner. You can sign up, you enter all the information as if you were going to show up for the event. Then that day of the event or whenever you get around to it, you run the 5K in Vicky's honor and eventually after the event, you'll get a t-shirt in the mail. The race has a registration fee of $26 to honor the memory of the 26 victims in the school, and you can register online at the site on your screen. James Villalobos, UMass This Week, Stratford, Connecticut. The UMass Day in Boston is happening <coughs> this Friday, October 25th, to celebrate 150 years of UMass history. The event is a special opportunity for alumni in Boston, as well as government and industry leaders, friends, and supporters to experience a day of spirit in the state's capital, focused on the stunningly talented musicians. The marching band of UMass will perform down the streets of Boston to Faneuil Hall for a lunchtime concert. Friends of the university <coughs> are encouraged to attend the celebration and, of course, wear maroon. If you walked by the Campus Center Auditorium this weekend, you may have seen the Iron Chef competition taking place. 
The auditorium was filled with faculty, students, and alumni who watched the second annual event last, uh, this past weekend. The, the show takes off their Food Network's Iron Chef TV series, and three teams comprised of UMass faculty competed and were instructed to create a meal in 30 minutes. The winning team of the event included Dr. Pierre Rosier of Health Services and Hampshire Dining Hall chef Anthony Jung. Well, there's some exciting news on campus. UMass is going to be spotlighted on Boston's Fox 25 morning show. They've invited UMass campus community to be part of their live TV broadcast on the Goodell Lawn this Thursday, October 24th from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. The station is conducting a college tour series which allows campuses to showcase their, excuse me, showcase their spirits and achievement. Hosts Elizabeth Hopkins and Brett Connolly will be mingling with the crowd while also interviewing students. There will be free food, giveaways, and many more festivities brought by the show's sponsors. So see you there bright and early. Well, Kyla, I think I'm going to go to that tomorrow. I'm definitely going to go. I had to be up at 10, but now I think I'm going to get up at 8. Yeah, I'm going to bring my resume to you and get an internship. <laughs> One day they'll say Kyla that, and Daniel. Instead that's going to be us in 20 years, Kyla. 20 exactly. years. <laughs> definitely. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kyla Gaylor. And I'm Daniel Rodriguez. For more news updates around campus, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Until next week, have a good night, UMass.